you will get hurt. Are they gonna kill you? No, they're not gonna kill you, but they're gonna hurt you. They will scratch you up pretty bad. Val Mahler is crazy about bobcats. Since opening the National Bobcat Rescue and Research Center in 2008, her life has been devoted to protecting and studying the often misunderstood predator. I've worked in the animal business my entire life. I've been a wildlife biologist, moved out here to, to do something completely different and fell into bobcats because that was what was booming at a time that there was no one else out here. I have not met a more intelligent, compassionate, emotional animal in my entire life. Bobcats, in comparison to their body size, have the largest brain of any of the felines. It doesn't matter if it's wild or if it's one that's been raised in, you know, in captivity. They all have this deep emotional bond with each other or with their human people. If they're a pet, they, they develop a deep emotional bond. Val's bobcats have developed this bond and show their affection by rubbing their glands on her and marking their scent. Oh, you're gonna squish me. You're gonna squish me. Headbutting and mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact are also believed to be the ultimate displays of affection. You're fat. You're fat. No. Normally, the difference in the marking and the affection, she will rub her head up against like this. <laughs> this is more of affection, and then she'll lick my nose a lot and hold it with her teeth. Hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's Dalton. That's Dalton. That's Dalton. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I know. Despite their friendly appearance, Val knows that the best place for these predators is out in the wild. Bobcats really do need to live in the wild. The reality is a bobcat is a wild cat, F0. They are wild. And so to put a wild animal, even if it's affectionate, even if it loves you as a cub, to put it into a pet environment is, is really just, it's just not, <laughs> I don't know, but it's not realistic. They are going to tear your house up. They can't be a house pet. If you are going to keep them as a pet, which we never condone, they need to be kept in large cages. You need to have the funding to be able to feed them every day. They're an obligate carnivore. They have to be fed meat. If you go to the grocery store and buy food, you have to use supplements to supplement that so it gives them the appropriate minerals and, and vitamins. So understanding what kind of animal they are what the responsibility is to them as an emotional animal that you cannot just leave, you can't go on a vacation and leave them behind. Val's bobcats remain highly territorial, and their unpredictable and ultimately wild nature make even the calmest of bobcats a dangerous choice of pet. <laughs> bobcats can be territorial. They can become food aggressive. When they have food that they want, that they think you might get from them, or when they have your phone or your keys and you want them, they're gonna hurt you. They're, they, you know, they can certainly, they have the ability to hurt. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so sorry. You okay? That just me. Yeah. Even our camera crew fell prey to these wild animals' advances. If you're down at the same level with them, or if they're up, at eye level on a fence, the, the first thing they're gonna do is jump at you and they and they will pat you really quickly with their feet. They just go pop, 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 pop. And you, your face will bleed a lot. So it's a warning. If you cross that line a second time, then that's when they use teeth. And teeth is where that begins to get more dangerous. Oh, it's my nose. It's my nose, my nose. Bobcats have been known to attack household pets, including rabbits, cats, and dogs. You're a great hairdresser. Even animal lover Val, who has around 50 animals living in her house, won't let the cats roam freely. I would absolutely 
not keep a bobcat running around my house. I, that to me, that would be insane. I have over 70 on the property. I would, I have my choice of every personality and every, you know, the extremes, one end to the other, from the from the sweetest to the craziest. And there's not one on this property that I would comfortably put into my house. Bobcats are nocturnal and primarily hunt under the cover of night. With a diet consisting of small and medium-sized mammals, this fierce predator will first stalk its prey before striking with razor-sharp precision, cutting the spinal cord of its unsuspecting victim. Val considers that the urbanization of traditional rural areas has, in fact, provided an almost ideal hunting ground for the bobcat. The planting of domestic shrubs, trees, and lawns has increased rabbit, bird, mice, and squirrel populations, all of which are the perfect bobcat prey. Bobcats are also known to kill prey much bigger than themselves. And while they often hunt by stealth, they can deliver a death blow with a leaping pounce that can cover 10 feet. That's too... What are you doing? He wants the toy. Their reputation for being vicious and predatory hunters has made bobcat trapping commonplace in the United States. As we know, their environment is dwindling. Um, they're preyed upon, they're killed. So it, it's, it's not the most friendly place for them outside of the borders or the safe walls of private ownership or, or animal company ownership. Bobcats are common throughout North America and are found in a range of diverse habitats. They adapt well to many different living conditions and can be found in forests, swamps, and deserts. In the last 10 years, their urban population has also increased significantly. When we talk about an urban bobcat, we're talking about an animal that has adapted to live in the urban environment. There are 12 uh, and questionably 13 subspecies of bobcats. The science is still outstanding on it. The smallest of the subspecies are down here south in Texas along the, the southern borders and in Mexico. And as you go north, they get larger. We have been doing the science on bobcats here for 20 years. We have learned more about them in the past 20 years probably than anybody has ever known about them. A lot of interesting things went on, particularly again with the urban bobcats, because they're almost a new species. They're, they're a completely different animal than the rural bobcats. I can't stand it. They smell like other cats. No, I know. It's a matriarchal society in the urban environment. The, the girls are in charge. The boys generally are really submissive to them. When you see two bobcats fighting, it's largely the females. Bobcats live a solitary lifestyle, only interacting with others of their kind during breeding season each winter. They are territorial, and run-ins at the wrong time of year are often violent. Even bobcats that have become pets remain stealthy hunters and premeditate every move they make. Val is taking a risk every time she interacts with these highly intelligent hunters. Yet she wants nothing more than to see the bobcat population thrive and survive. Yes, there are lots of bobcats in America today. There are. And in 20 years, I think there's every likelihood that we could lose all of them due to inbreeding and genetic issues and disease, and it could take out both the urban and the rural cats. So I think that our work here is important, understanding them before this happens, um, you know, and being ready for it when it does happen um, is going to be a very important part of what we do. Mm -hmm.